Well, good afternoon. Sorry about that. I was just thinking if I'd gotten all set up right. I wasn't sure, but there we are. Well, it's Tuesday now, but earlier today, thank goodness. I'd say a busy day yesterday. I hope everybody's all right. My weather's certainly changing now, isn't it? But there we are. I shouldn't listen to the news too much, though. I don't take them much notice of them now, as long as we can stay safe. Be, just be comfortable, be safe. Stay in a bit by the fire. Now come winter time. And... Uh, a bit snooze if you want to in the afternoon or do we good. Anyhow, I got a Herbert Lean one here today. This one's called the Vis the Village Concert. Sorry about that. Shove up bit mad, Lizzie. Some hot in here. I done some pack of washing before I had tea. My back is aching and all dry too. I know there would be some crowd here, only collection come in. Who's taking a chair? Not I. Oh, Mr Tree Pole, I believe. What he? He won't give much, I don't know. Father, put away your pipe. Aren't loud smoking here? They all oil lamps will do all the smoking. I'm so glad I'm early, for I'd dearly love a good seat. All is nearly full now. Where's your boy Richard Henry? Oh, he left on for we did. He's telling a recital night. Some good job with us with on this afternoon. Hark, shut us up. Tis now going to begin. Stop scratching, feather. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to see so many of you here tonight. Voice at the back. Don't miss much, do we? Chairman, speak up at the back, please. I can't hear you. Same voice. We're very glad to see you, sir. Chairman, thank you. And now, by the way of a change, we shall choose your own opening hymn. We want a good start. Speak up. Who will be the next? Number 94 called out the village barber who was sitting in the front row and had lately been ignored because he had raised the price of his shaven. No, no, shouted the men at the back. Sit down, sit down. Up jumped Mr Meek and, and had what Tom Tiddlywink called a peppermint in his speech. He started fee, 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 fee. This was received with loud cheers. As it dawned on them, he meant fight the good fight. For only last night he had knocked down Jan and Ear, who had been beating up his wife and little child. Open him. Fight the good fight went well. Everybody joined in, even Mrs. James, who come in late to avoid the collection at the door. The chairman. The first item on the programme is a mouth organ solo by Mr. James Trenown. Loud cheers by the audience, but he was always a favourite at every com concert. James jumped up on the platform and shouted, Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. There was a commotion at the back door. The door opened and Daisy Treglown, who had fainted, was carried out. James had been seen walking out with her after chapel for several Sundays. Come on, join in the choir, shouted James, and if anyone was was, was heard the hearty singing of the Cornish people, you will understand how this old favourite song was sung by everyone in the hall. Chairman, well, that was rendered. Recital, thank you, James. Now, let me see. The next one will be a recitation by one who's very well known to all, Richard Henry. Up come Richard Henry with his recital in his hand and gave him to the chairman in case he forgot the words. The chairman took the folded piece of paper and thought it was something for him to read, put on his glasses and read to the audience, Gone down Aunt Liz's, give the cat drop milk, shan't be long. I'm very sorry, my mistake said now Richard Henry. What is the title of your little piece? Ted no little piece got four verses. Chairman, all right, all right. What is the title? Little ship goes sailing by. And through the four verses rushed Richard Henry without a stop. Never missed a word, including the end at the finish. You lost your sixpence, feather. Pay up. Boy didn't miss a word. Chairman, now we have to have a change. Uncle Tobias will sing Grandfather Clock. But old Uncle Tobias had a bad cold and no one could hear him. He had sung this song at every concert for the last 15 years. But he always put up half a sovereign on the collection plate. The audience, who had heard it so often, sang it instead. Chairman again. 
We've had quite a variety tonight. Miss Be Near will favour us with a song entitled Give Me the Wings of a Dove. Whilst the artist was getting her music, one could hear the marks at the back of the hole. She, she's no dove. She may have come out of the ark. She'd been courted nigh on 12 years. To said he went be married in chapel and she went go near to the altar in the church. She'd been near, but not near enough. Chairman, order please, order. Miss Near sang her song in a very low, deep voice that was received with low clapping. She really had a lovely contralto voice and they all enjoyed her singing. Feather said afterward, if she went down much further, she'd have to have a ladder to get up again. Chairman again, where's Mr. Trengrove? I have not seen him for this evening. He's on the programme for a step dance. Mrs. Trengrove arose in the orders and shouted, he's working late and he won't be here. Loud laughing was ordered all over the hall, as he had never been known to work since he was married. Too tired to take his boots off when he got in bed. Community singing followed until the windows had to be opened, for the hall got so hot, something had to be done. This made all the oil lamps smoke more than ever until it was impossible to see across the room. Feather said you couldn't see your hand behind your back. So the chairman thanked all who had helped to make the concert such a success. The man at the table in the back of the hall announced that the collection was in aid of the proceeds and amounted to five pounds, five shillings and three buttons. Mother was heard to remark as she pushed through the crowd some handsome concert and everything went off without a hitch. Thanks very much. <laughs>